Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. I am so excited to announce my guest today, Hans Wilhelm. Hans is the author and illustrator of over 200 books for all ages, including some together with Byron Katie. His books have sold over 40 million copies and are translated into 30 languages. So if you haven't picked up one of his books, you have to do so. They're amazing. As a mystic, he is now using his talents to explain complicated spiritual laws and concepts in short, cost-free videos in a very unique and simple way. His videos have been successful and they have already been watched by over 14 million viewers. You can read um, his books. You can connect to his videos by going to www.lifeexplained.com or on YouTube. You don't want to miss them. They're, they're very easy to follow for very complicated topics. Han says, my mission is to offer these videos to inspire viewers to question and explore spirituality and their own relationship to the universe. And for that, we thank you, Hans, and welcome to my show. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. I'm delighted and very honored to be on your show. I've uh, admired you for a long time. We are nearly neighbors. We're not too far away, but I've been on your public uh, appearances and I was always impressed and so was my wife. And you are a genius in what you're doing and specially selected, I think, from the spiritual side to do your wonderful work as well. So we both do our best, what we ever can, to bring a little bit of light into the very dark time at the moment. Yes, that's important to bring the light in because it is a very dark time and a very confusing time. And people are searching for God, spirituality, this, the spark of divinity, where, where is it? Um, and I, you speak a lot about that. Um, one of the things that, that you say or you reference is the back of the napkin approach. What is that? Well, do you remember when you are sometimes in, a, in the olden days when we went to restaurants and saw friends and so on, and you wanted to make something clear, explain it. I, would, I used to just use it, take a pen and draw it on the napkin, or you want to give some directions because the napkin is easy at hand and you, the person sees it visually and it makes it much clearer to understand. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what I do as well. You know, I remember when I came to America, my favorite show was Bob Ross. The painter, you know, he does all these uh, oh, yeah. awful, awful things. I loved him. I, I, I had to watch them. I couldn't switch the channel because it's mesmerizing to see how somebody slowly develops this picture. And he does that. And I, I do it in a similar way, of course, not in color so much. And uh, it's not art, what I try to explain, but spiritual laws. But I do use a similar techniques by slowly drawing out, like I would do on a napkin here on a whiteboard, uh, how the dots connect, how the dots connect in case of karma, how the dots connect in case of reincarnation, the law of attraction, what happens after death. When we see this, sort of how it all fits together, then I, when I actually, what I happen to me when I do this video, I'm always at awe about the perfection, how everything fits together. There are no loose ends. And seeing this magnificent perfection around me and in the spiritual realm as well, sort of gives me more and more confidence and trust and faith in that what I share with others works. It works for me and I share that. I have no need to convince anybody. What I offer, if that works for you, it's great. And if not, it's great too. I, I have really zero interest, but I do know that there are a lot of people who seek and look and there are a lot of videos, spiritual videos, very good ones, very less good ones. And you have to find your own way there but I believe if you make it very simple and clear, I like uh, Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you haven't understood it yourself. And that is my motto. motto. If I can't explain it to a six-year-old, it has to be very clear to a, for even for a young person. And I know from the emails I get from the parents, they do share these videos with their children and discuss it with them. So that is sort of my goal to very, make it very simple, to show the simple application in religion, we have particularly organized religion has made the divine aspect of our life often so complicated with so many rules and dogmas and traditions and you name it. But God is ingenious simplicity, very clear, very direct, accessible for everybody because he is in everybody. And therefore, I take all these, these trimmings away and says, let's go and go right through it. 
and uh, find God in you, around you, wherever God is. Uh, God is everywhere. And uh, then you understand it much easier instead of getting caught up by all the techno technical uh, things or the very uh, much of the, the, the ancient writings and so on. They're all wonderful and very helpful. But God speaks today in a very clear, direct language. And this clear language, I try to trans uh, make visual because I am also an illustrator. And this is all of my talent, I think, I share with, with people. You know, it's very interesting because to a lot of your points, you know, um, you know, when I was writing conversations with Mary, the thing that Mary kept repeating over and over again is to keep it simple, to communicate, mm -hmm. but keep it simple. You know, as human beings, we tend to overprocess. And, you know, like you, you know, people say, oh, it must be so wonderful to have this gift. But to you, it's secondhand. No, no. You know, as things come through me, I'm always in awe of what comes out of my mouth. You know, so spirit works through us and not just the two of us, but once there's an awakening and people recognize that divine spark within us and in them, it works through them as well. You know, um, and so you're speaking to every person, you know, about bringing that up. There's no reason to, you know, convert people. You know, I think it's more about explaining and they make the choice whether or not this is the path they want to walk. You know, it's my prayer that people do awaken and they do recognize spirit in and around us. Um, so it's, it's very, it's, it's, you know, what you're saying, like, so speaks to me and I'm sure, I'm sure we'll speak to so many people um, who are, are listening. And a lot of people are questioning now, if this divine spark is in us, what's going on in this country? You know? What's going on in this country? <clears throat> good question. A lot of things, good things happen in this world. It's not all negative. It's a media which brings out the negative. And definitely in the last few weeks or days, which we have seen here in America, there are some horrific stuff that is happening here. But it's not all there. There are also a lot of wonderful stuff happening at the moment. And we have to focus on both sides to keep it, on, keep it in balance. But what does happen is nothing what uh, shouldn't happen in a way, because everything is carefully orchestrated mm -hmm. and everything is carefully orchestrated for our growth and for our well-being. Now, that doesn't mean that we like it and we love it and embrace it. But whatever happens, there are no accidents. Everything happens to us individually as well as collectively that we need to go through experience if that is our choice. We can also avoid it. We don't have to uh, face uh, the problems because we have always have the gift of forgiveness and asking for repentance and undoing what we call our karma, our soul burden. And that way our karma and our soul burden can be alleviated and can be taken away from us. But if we do not choose uh, the path of love, which is always asking forgiveness and forgiving others, then these things will definitely come on us uh, so that we will feel the pain that we have inflicted on others in this or in past lifetimes. And it's a very simple kind of, uh, uh, what is this word, very, a very simple system how this works. It's just a sowing and reaping system. And what we see outside in the world, the negativity, is a lot of stuff that comes back to us. But here again, we have, and the confirmation of this is anything that we see in the outside world, maybe on the television or wherever, and that upsets us is definitely something that is in us. Nothing in the outside world can upset us, which is not in us. So it is always the law of projection, the law of correspondence, that if we see war on the screen and we upset about this war, this war is in us. The outside world is nothing but a mirror what we are in ourselves. Yeah. Can you go further um, and explain karma? Karma, uh, the way I understand it, is a tool given to us to recognize ourselves of who we truly are. We are all, a, without exception, perfect spiritual being, divine God, assist, uh, sons and daughters of God. And we once, a long time ago, have left that realm of uh, absolute reality and have uh, fallen into the temporal reality, the te uh, reality of time and space. And our goal is to eventually return back to God, to back to the Godhead. And the only way to do this is to become love again, because love is what we are basically made of. I think you said it so, so, so clever in, in one of your talks, I remember. You, we are hardwired to love. And I think that is our true essence. We are hardwired to love. And whenever we do not do this, there's a gentle reminder from the universe telling us, go back. That means when we do something unloving, 
that unlovingness will come back to us so that we experience on ourselves of how uh, this unloving act, thought, word uh, has, uh, has affected other people or their environment or even ourselves. We can do it to ourselves as well. So karma is just the law of sowing and reading. Everything what we send out comes back to us. Everything is reflection. So whatever we send out comes back. And so we have the, always a free choice. What do we want to send out? Loving things or unloving things? So there is no exception to this. And the beautiful law of the, the laws, it, it affects everybody equally, whether you are rich and powerful or whether you are poor, the law of, of, of karma, the law of reflection uh, and uh, sowing and reaping affects equal, everyone equally. So if, in, you know, following what you're saying, and it seems like there's, there's a purpose within karma, what about cancer and people who have horrible illnesses? Horrible illness. It, I always want to be very careful when I say this, these uh, the answers to specific illnesses. I do not know why a certain person has cancer, and I would not assume why a certain person has cancer, because we also have got one major exception in this rule why people have sometimes negative experiences. And I'd like to touch it very quickly before I answer it, the other half. This is sometimes a soul goes out of pure love for another soul, like a mother would do for her child, and incarnate into this, uh, onto this earth and take over their karma to, so that this karma of that soul becomes less. So the person um, who has the ca uh, cancer is not the one who did the bad deed or whatever it was. It was somebody who out of love incarnated to help the other soul to have less karma. But mostly whatever happens to us, whether it's karma or whether it's cancer, whether it is an accident or whatever it is, if these are all things which are coming back to us and each one is a healing. Even if the cancer looks bad, it is a healing. Everything is a step back home and everything is a message, a message to love. Even the cancer to a degree needs to love, be, to be loved. Think about it. Is there anyone or anything in your life right now you do not love? any kind of habit, anything, whatever it is, or whoever it is, that person rules your life. And the only way to become free of whatever it is, is by loving it and then letting it go. That is the reach. That is what Ho'oponopono always says, you know, I love you, please forgive me, thank you, and, and uh, please forgive me, uh, I love you, please forgive me, thank you, and uh, that was a fourth one, forgot it <laughs> right now. But it is always the key of us to love. The only thing we have to do here in thank life you. is- The fourth one is thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but the only thing we do here is love is to love. Love and nothing else. That is our, our prime mm -hmm. task. And uh, if we do not do it, then we will have the consequences. Karma is not punishment. Cancer is not punishment. Is, are, these are uh, consequences. And even in cancer, whatever it may be, how horrific it is, there is something our soul can learn from. The moment we are sick, we are already a step closer to God because that means the karma is flowing out through us. Right now, it is leaving us. Our burden is leaving us. That is an outflowing of karma. That is what an illness is. So when we see an illness and are in a way grateful that now the karma flows out to us and we are done for it, we are already reaching a different kind of vibration. And we, of course, can heal it and stop it. We should never say no to the technical technology which is given to us, the medical technology. But we do have this as a gift to wake up, a gift to return back to home. It is a time of introspective very often. People are suddenly look, have to face at the look at their life, which they never had the time or willingness to do so. So there is a lot of stuff it would in cancer or in any kind of illness can be, including the present uh, COVID pandemic. Pan epidemic. It is also there for our soul to mm -hmm. sit back and reflect. And it has a lot of positive in it. Yes, in the, economically wise, it is disastrous. But maybe we needed that too to wake up to a degree as a collectively, not individually. It would be very painful. I understand that. But collectively, maybe we were following the wrong goals in life. Look what we have done to the world with our technology, with our pollution, whatever it is. Maybe says us, oh my gosh, maybe we should just w live a little bit differently. Could be. Oh, I agree with that totally. I think that, you know, 
my heart breaks for all the people who have been ill and the people who have passed on. But through this pandemic and, and through everything that's been going on politically, there has been so much good that has come out of it. Things have risen to our awareness. We have been forced to look at ourselves. We have been forced to say, do I really need this or that? What truly makes me happy? Families coming together, problems being solved within relationships, which breaks my heart, you know, when I read things, you know, on Facebook or wherever, where people are saying, I have to unfriend you for your beliefs, instead of, you know, we have free will to believe and respect and leaving out violence and all, you know, things that can physically hurt people, you know, accepting people and respecting people, no matter what, I mean, no matter what they believe. I personally am not political. Um, that's not to say I like what's going on. But, you know, I think that, you know, through all of this, we're sitting back and saying, who are we as people and how do we connect? And what's been brought up that we need to address? And I just hope that people don't leave these feelings and these memories of what we've been through, but use it to further their lives. You know, it's, it's important, you know, and also, you know, I tell people, and it's so fatalistic to say this, but every day we live, we are closer to death. We live to die. Okay, we really yeah. do. You know, that's the great reward. Not that you should try to die, you know, because if your time isn't here, your time isn't here. But you know, it's that great. Well, we can't, we can't understand that because we're stuck with the pain of, of living here with people who have passed. So um, I love, I love like when you talk about things like that, because I think it brings in an understanding that um, simplifies what so many people have said um, very complicated, you know? So that being said, what do you, what do you think is the meaning of life? You know? I know that's well, a big question. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, uh, this is my understanding. It is really returning back to the Godhead, returning back to our true home, which where we were, as I said earlier, we are perfect beings, so we don't have to learn anything new. We have to unlearn the garbage over which we have accumulated over a lifetime, over a lifetime, over a long, long time. So we have only to remember who we are. The essence of us is pure, is pure delight, is pure the divine being essence. And that's we will return to. And uh, that is our goal, and we have the opportunity, and I have made a uh, nice video about it called The Amazing Earth School. We are here on Earth for this very, very short time of 25,000 days only, which is an average. Of course, some do more, some do less. And in this Earth School, we have this incredible opportunity to undo our karma in a very, very fast way by forgiveness, uh, by repentance, and forgiving others, and making amends. And to do this, which is in the spiritual world, very, very difficult and takes a long time. Furthermore, we do also do have here our physical body, which works like a buffer. So the pain of karma is here buffered, very much so. It is, we are totally exposed in the spiritual world uh, to all the negativity we have caused here. So, and it takes, it's much more painful. So we are here for this very, very short time to clear up. We also have been the opportunity to interact with all different type of people of different beliefs, of different backgrounds, whatever it is. And that is not possible in the spiritual world to that degree, because there we are attracted by the law of attraction to a specific group, people or souls of similar vibration. So we have put all the Muslims together and all the capitalists together or all the murderers together, whatever you want to say. So there is not much interaction of other views and understanding. Here on Earth is one of the very, this very special thing about Earth is that it, it does, it allows to attract souls from all lower four spheres to incarnate at the same time. So we have got an abundance of alternatives to see and look at and read and, and be exposed to. And then we can really challenge ourselves. Is this what I do believe or not believe? So this is a very, very special, special time. And basically we are here to learn, to love again, to love everything. I made a video called Love It All. I know it's a very tall task, but I like to remind this is this, the beautiful story of the beauty of the beast where beauty goes to this, uh, gets lost there and finds this castle. So she is looking for this prince and she gets and sees this horrible beast and she stays with the beast and she's afraid of it. Eventually she falls in love with the beast or loves the beast. And that moment, of course, he turns into the prince. And that is exactly like everything in our world 
we should look as well. Everything which doesn't look, which still looks like a beast is nothing but a prince or princess. There is no exception to that rule. We are all divine daughters and sons of God. And that means that everybody is equal and everybody is equally wonderful. But it's tough to look through it when we are here on this earth. But that is our goal, to go deeper, not to look at the surface and other surface stuff. So in short, we are here to learn to love again and to be learn to who we truly are. We do not have any reach, any high, high goal. All we have to do to come back to who we are. This is different. A lot of uh, spiritual paths teach that we have to become better, better, improve, evolve, evolve. Yes, evolve on some sense, but truth is we just have to become and recognize who we already inwardly are. Just that perfect being. And from that high level, from that high energy field, make our choices in what we do and what we think and what we speak. So you talk about when we go home, we're with people of similar vibration. So if someone is a murderer and they're with a group of murderers, is there learning from that? Almost certainly. In that place? Eventually, yeah, there's, there's learning everywhere. It just takes much longer time. If you are surrounded only by people who believe your political party system and you are living in that bubble, you are really open to see other people's view as well. And the political bubble can be any other bubble. So yes, there is eventually everyone will return to God. There is no exception. So no, there is no eternal damnation or condemnation and mm -hmm. there is no eternal hell. So everybody will return, but we determine how fast we want to learn. And here on earth, we can learn it fastest in the most fastest and speediest way because we have got all these wonderful teachings and the wonderful things. But from all the teachings, there's only one teaching which we must understand, which is in all, it's in all civilization. And that's a golden rule. The golden rule, do unto others as you want them to do to us, is the basic law of how to behave in life. And if we all they would live by that one rule, we would be already in heaven. <laughs> yeah, well, that rule and love others as you love yourself, which is, it's not just about running around and loving everybody, but you have to love who you are. Yes. You know, so that you're able to give that love to other people without the boundaries. True. So do you believe that the soul chooses to reincarnate? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I don't think anybody is here against their will. There are a lot of souls who push for reincarnation because they remember very strongly still the wonderful life they had here or the habits they had here that they couldn't fulfill anymore in the spiritual world. And they do push for incarnation uh, against sometimes the advice of their, their spirit guides. But uh, most of us have, and I have made a video on about it, it's called Life Before Birth, in which we see that we are given, we are shown more or less the potential of our future life. We see the people we most likely will meet, where will be our difficulties and how we could uh, make them better. So we, in advance, we are given the uh, difficulties and see the difficulties. But we also know that this is an incredible opportunity. And we say, yes, it's the same thing. Like if you are, want to apply for Harvard or Yale, and says, gee, I want to be there. Yes, I know it's very, very hard to be there, to get in there and hard work. But I want to go to Yale. I want to go to Harvard. And so you do say yes. And we all have said yes. You have said yes. I have said yes to come here, mostly to solve, to undo our karma. But we, many of us also have come in addition to help uh, and bring some light into the world as well. So a lot of healers and a lot of uh, people who want to make this world a little bit better price, uh, place, as this can be even politicians it can be anybody to do it in their own special way so that in addition but i believe yes nobody is here against their own will do you think uh, anything i mean you you speaking to the dead in the suburbia no, all no. the time i believe totally we come here of own, our own free will you know um i believe that you know and what i've heard from the other side they choose to come back to become more perfect as a loving being so that they can finally rest in that place of pure love you know they bringing up the vibration of love which is the vibration of god so no i totally absolutely believe that yeah. but i have a question so you talk about um you know before we incarnate the soul sees difficulties we may encounter and that kind of feels like fate and yet we have free will so can't those difficulties be circumvented 
those difficulties which we are seeing are the ones which we created in previous lifetimes, most likely. This is sort of like, for instance, uh, an unresolved problem. I've killed somebody and maybe in my future life, the person will come to me and some different thing comes up. So it's something which I personally created that what you call fate, I did create, but I now have the opportunity to undo it through forgiveness, through love, mm -hmm. through, uh, through forgiving them. So we have the opportunity, yes, to a way it looks like fate, but it's totally self-made fate, not some God or anybody else did it to us. We created those difficult situations. And a difficult situation is just nothing than a challenge to become, as you said earlier, become more loving again. So all these problems we have in Yale and, and Harvard, if we go there, these tasks are there to make us stronger mm -hmm. and to overcome and to reach that level what we want to reach, the, the becoming love again. So no fate in the, in the way how it's done in the Muslim tradition, the way I understand it, that this is God wants it, Allah wants it. No, that I do not believe. No God, the God I believe, does not want us to suffer. Mm -hmm. God, I believe, does not want us to hurt or do anything what we, the nonsense we do here on earth. On the contrary. He is there all the time for us to help us and guide us out of the mess. And he gave us a lot of help from God in spirit to uh, the God spark in us, the Christ spark in us, and a lot of other tools. But uh, we create, if we don't want to uh, listen, we have two ways to learn in life. It's through insight or through pain. Insight means, oh, okay, I live by the golden rule or whatever golden I live by. And pain is, I will hurt you and the pain will come back to me. The majority of us in this world unfortunately learn by pain. We know that we do harm to the environment in a way all the time, but eh, maybe we get, maybe it's not so on. So we don't learn. We just, we don't make the real changes which we need to do in our ecology, in our business, in our in, in, uh, political and everywhere. No, because we think, well, maybe I get away with it. No, we don't. We never get away with anything. Yeah, um, that's so that's so interesting. And I hope that people listen to what you're saying. You know, when people say to me, why did God allow this to happen? God is not allowing it to happen, but we're not robots. You know, we do things of our own free will. And sometimes it's to, you know, bring a lightness through darkness. And it's also to, you know, settle karma, which is um, important. You know, when I'm a hypnotherapist and sometimes when there have been incidents when I have regressed people and they saw themselves as a murderer, okay? Um, and when I bring them to, they're very upset. Like, I'm a horrible person. I have a horrible soul. And my answer is no, you're great. Cause you're back here fixing what you did in a past lifetime. And you know, kudos to you, you came back to fix it. And that's kind of what it's all about, you know? Yeah. It goes yeah. on and on and on. That's why we, most of us, or all of us have got the veil of forgetfulness when we incarnate so that we do not remember all the horrific things we have done in the past life. We couldn't live with that. No. We couldn't live with that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that's, that's why people find it so difficult. I said, but understand, look, what is the Holocaust and all the things people do and so on, the horrible things. Those people are uh, all uh, innocent or whatever it is. Do we know that for sure? Is anybody innocent? Anybody I know, I have no idea how many people I killed in previous lifetimes, anybody else. If we go by the history of the world, it was a gruesome place. I mean, you couldn't go from village to village without being fearing for your life. And we are living in a pretty safe environment right now for the mm -hmm. most part in this, like never before. But in the past, it was very, very different. It was a brutal way to survive. You know, um, I asked Mary um, in my book about that you know, about, you know, we're living in such difficult times. And she says, there have been so many difficult times over, over the course of the world, you know, and the evolution and where you guys are today, you know, um, and you navigate. But the thing is to learn from it, to learn from not only our own personal history, our soul history, but also the history of the world. You know, yeah. there's so much to learn, so much to fill ourselves with that it can be quite overwhelming. But I also feel like some things just come to us and we learn things subconsciously without even knowing we're learning them and, and yeah. help us to, to move on with that. That's what it comes to the, the uh, either through insight, which means we learn from it, as, as uh, Mary said to you, or through pain. So we have the choices. We yeah. always have free choice, yeah. always free will. 
you know, and I always, you know, when, when people are talking to me and they're saying, I have more pain than this person, it's like, no, everybody <laughs> owns their own pain and feels their own pain. You know, the big thing I feel always is judgment. Step out of judgment in every level. Don't, you know, yeah. look at yourself. Don't judge yourself. Don't judge other people. Don't judge the minutia and the big things, you know, mm -hmm. because we're all here on this journey with each other. And at the end, we're going on to a different place. And all this stuff, you know, that you judge doesn't, doesn't mean anything. And you have to come back and heal from that. So, you know, it's like, try to get it right. You know, mm -hmm. that's a big thing. You know, you also write children's books that are beautiful. Thank um, you. you know, um, your book on bullying is, um, it's, it's wonderful, you know, how you speak to children. Um, as well as adults. I feel like, you know, you just are getting it out there in every way that you can. How did you get into all of this? I always wanted to do that because uh, I always like to create and started a long time ago and my, one book came to the other. I don't know. It just, it just developed. Initially, I started to make a cartoon books. And uh, I even made cartoons for Playboy. <laughs> you know, reading. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, but um, so I'd make cartoon books, and then uh, it just came children book afterwards, and I stayed with it and enjoyed it thoroughly. And uh, uh, it's my way of expressing it, of bringing a bit light into life, because uh, childhood can be very, very difficult for children, and I think a little bit of positive books and reinforcement in books can be very, very helpful. And uh, I just enjoy doing that, I must say. And thank you for mentioning it. Normally, I never speak about this on my interviews in spirituality, but that's, that's my main line. That's how I live on, on the children book. Because as you know, my channel is totally free of advertising. I do not make any money on it. And that is also, I do not ask for donations. It's simply self-funded. Um, but my real life is that of being an author and illustrator for children's books, mostly at the moment, but I do have some adult books as well. Well, you know, children are our future, you know, and yes. can speak to that. That's also part of what you're bringing through spiritually. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's fascinating that you have millions of followers. So obviously people are hungering for what you're putting out there. And, you know, it's, it's an honor to be with someone who is so prolific, you know, and who's doing the work. Um, so, you know, I thank you. Is there anything else that, that you want to say that perhaps I missed? No, I think you did a wonderful interview. Thank you so much. I said it all. I, I don't have a need to convince anybody, but anybody who wishes to see how the spiritual laws work, if visually work, go to my website, on lifeexplained.com or go to the YouTube and just put in Hans Wilhelm and you, you come to the channel. That is all. And we take it from there. And if it doesn't work for you, that's fine too. I just have fun doing it. And I'd like to share that with others who, those who are interested in it. And you're doing a great job too, Anna. It was oh, a delight to you. be on your show. Thank you. Um, and I do suggest to everyone who is listening to this to really check out the videos that, that Hans has done because they are so wonderful and so enlightening. And share them with your friends and your family because we all need to be on this path and we need to understand what we're all about. I feel your father around you. I also feel that he was not on your page, okay? Like what you're like, he didn't really understand you and, and sometimes got in the way of you moving forward, okay? He wants you to know, did he never say he was proud of you? Oh, after, after he was dead, yeah. Yeah, but while he was living. Uh, not contrary, we, in Germany, we don't do this. <laughs> in Germany, we don't do okay, that. <laughs> Yeah, but, he but I'm was, sure he was happy with, for me. Well, yes, in any way, yes. He's very proud of you. Um, he's very proud of what you're doing. He's helping you. Like, I feel like he always wants to help you. Um, you know, whether or not, you know, he understood um, what you say, now he understands it. In life, I think he had a little bit of a hard time, okay? Was he religious? Not at all. No, he was not. And... Uh, who was the religious well, one? My, only my grandmother in a way, okay, but she was, was that, very quiet. Was that his mother? No. Okay, because the religious one is with him, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he's saying that he lived by the golden rule was, 
I do this, I walk this way, things happen based upon my actions, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is fine, um, but he didn't bring everything else into it, okay? Who's Margaret? Margaret is an old friend of mine who committed suicide. Yeah, um, because she wants you to know, um, oh, that's very interesting. Um, so I'm writing a book about suicide. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, because, um, she wants her story told in some way. Um, you know, whatever it was, she wants her story told. Um, she's, um, she regrets, you know, what she did. Um, and she knows you understand that. Um, do you talk to her out loud sometimes? No. She wants you to. Okay. She wants you to talk to her. Um, because you were always the, the compassionate one and she's thanking you. So I thank you so much for coming on. Um, thank you. And have a happy, happy, happy new year. Continue Same to you, Anna. for all of us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.